Hey everyone, I'm Rod Roddenberry, and you're listening to Trek FM. Hello and welcome to Stage 9, Trek FM show about the people who make Star Trek. I'm Mike. I'm John. And today we are going to be uh, doing, we're going to have a little fun today. We're going to have a little fun with our, our, our topic today. Yes. Um, but before we get into that, um, we should probably just mention the fact that the IMDb lists a uh, another director for Discovery. Yeah. And his name is Lee Rose, and he is a television director who has worked on many, many shows, including, I mean, I'll just go down the list of some of these noteworthy things here, um, Soul Food, uh, Weeds, Greek, In Plain Sight, The yeah. Firm, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Switched at Birth, True Blood, Under the Dome, Yeesh. Dark That's... Matter, Haven, Grace and Frankie, Code Black, MacGyver, Grimm, Riverdale, and most notably, for our purposes, I think, is Rain, which is that Mary Queen of Scots show, which is, uh, you know, uh, formerly was worked on by, by Berg and Harberts. And if you look at the other producers and stuff who are working on this show, it seems like they're bringing a lot of the Rain crew on to um, Discovery, which Rain, mm -hmm. it's in the middle of its final season right now. They've already announced that it's ending, so I guess all those people were free, so it makes sense, yeah. you know? It, it, <laughs> they knew that their schedules had opened up. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and Lee Rose is, according to the IMDb, directing episode five of Discovery, which means there's probably, they list, you know, David Semmel as episode one, Vincenzo mm -hmm. Natali as episode two, yes. which, you know, a lot of this can be speculation, so who knows. But that means that there's an episode three and an episode four directed by who knows, right? Question mark. Yeah. Or multiple so, question marks if you really want to amp up the curiosity factor. For sure, for sure. So with with all of this sort of up in the air, we thought it would be fun today to take a look at some of the people who we would want to see direct episodes of Discovery. These are not people who we think are going to direct Discovery. These are not people who... Mm -hmm. um, There's no inside info on this show. No. We don't know anything that you don't know. Right. We're trying to be semi-realistic for it, although we also do have some, some you know, um, way out there never going to happen choices. I, I mean, come on. It wouldn't be us if we didn't have something a little interesting to listen to, right? Yeah, yeah. But we yeah. we didn't want to make them all that because then it would be boring because it's the same, you know, X right. amount of names. So, yeah, somewhat realistic choices. And, yeah, so wh which do you think we should start with? Do you think we should start with the, you know, pie-in-the-sky choices or do you think we should start with the more Let, down to earth realistic. Let's start ones. with the more down to earth, down to earth choices. Although I think one of my down to earth choices is still pie in the sky. Like he straddles a line. Um, let's yeah, build up to the yeah, pie. Yeah, some in of the them sky. can be borderline, you know. But I mean, Actually, you, you never know. You never know because I mean, when you say, I mean, uh, hey, if we were to do this when they were starting to, you know, staff staff writers, right? Yeah. I mean, would Nicholas Meyer be a pie in the sky choice? I would think so. Yes. So uh, yeah, that would have been that would have been left. That would have been like they'll never do this. But mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. I mean, I have never you know picked Guillermo Navarro out of a hat for uh, for cinematography. Hell that no. Was, what? Uh -uh. <laughs> so so yeah. you know who knows who knows. But I let's, don't. Let's let's not speculate. But let's uh, let's dream. Yeah, let's dream a little bit. Because okay. Star Trek is about dreams. It's about a dream of a future. So yeah, there we go. and and life is but a dream, as we learned from Star Trek Five. The final it's a key lesson, here. Mike. It's very important. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so okay. so who do you have on your list? Give give me your first uh, your first name. I, I'm going to go in order of like likely to maybe not so likely. 
you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I'm going to blow past. I actually put it as a as a joke for myself, Vincenzo Natali, because you yeah. know I was like, hey, he'd be great, and it's like, hey, hey, look, he's doing one, so yep. that doesn't count. But um, no. and I think I think it would be fair. I mean, he's on the list, obviously. I'm, I'm guessing you have Frakes on your list too. Yes. I do. I do. Yeah. I guess we can start there, right? Let's just start with Frakes. Frakes is an obvious choice. Frakes has dropped a hint that he, he might be doing it. We've talked about him. We even watched Clock Stoppers. He'd be welcome. People would love it. If, if you said Jonathan Frakes is directing an episode of Discovery, yay, everybody's going to, you know, e- even if, and it won't be this way, but even if like the first two episodes stank and they were like, but Jonathan Frakes is directing the third one, everybody's in at least for three episodes. That's how everyone was. I don't know if it's just the people who who I follow on Twitter or whatever, but when, you know, people got word that Jonathan Frakes was directing an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., everyone was like, oh, yeah, you know? Right. I mean, so can you imagine what that would be like for Star Trek? It, 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 yes, it would be the world eating itself mm-hmm. uh, in, in terms of reactions. It would be wonderful. I, I mean, I, I think he's just a given. I mean, why wouldn't you? And, you know, I, I think he is he's, he's there. So he's obviously on both of our lists. Who's your number two? My number two is is another one who seems like an obvious choice, but it's like one of those things where would he be willing to do it? You know, who knows where he's at in his, you know, headspace right now. But yeah. I mean, obviously, you have Nicholas Meyer writing for your Star Trek show. Is yeah. there any way that they're not going to be like, hey, Nick? You want to direct an episode? Because, I mean, like, would they, I mean, I cannot see any scenario in which they'd be like, I don't know, man. I don't know if he's right for this gig. No, of course. (laughs) You have Nicholas Meyer writing your Star Trek show. You're going to be like, hey, you want to direct an episode? And it's quite possible that he'd be like, nah. That's too yeah. much work. You know, I don't, I want to focus on writing, whatever, you know, whatever. Who knows, right? Right. I want to write and go to the opera. I don't want to direct a TV <laughs> show right now. Yeah, but it looks like he's been in Toronto lately, which makes sense because, I mean, don't they usually have, like, the writers on set or whatever? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I guess it all depends on, you know, the production, but I think usually, like, whoever wrote the episode gets to be on set, and it seems like he's in Toronto. At the very least, his dog is in Toronto. <laughs> and, um, you know, we know from from what uh, Fuller said early on that he wrote the second half of the pilot, apparently. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, he's there. But yeah. is it possible that he's there also prepping episode three or something? I think that's a, a completely logical leap to make. I really do. I, I think that there's no, you know, I, I'm, I actually don't have him on my list because it didn't even... I, to speak to the pie in the sky discussion, it, it, even though he's working on the show, it didn't occur to me that Nicholas Meyer would be, a, you know, like it's one of those things where I think I just compartmentalize. And I'm like, no, you know, like it's just one of those names that I instantly put aside as as no. But you're absolutely right. He's there. He's writing it. Why wouldn't he direct an episode? That, that makes sense. That makes sense. Maybe he's busy directing episodes of Time After Time. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think so. Did you see? They showed commercials for that like crazy during the Oscars. I know you didn't watch the Oscars because... And it wasn't any... I haven't watched the Oscars in years. It's not any statement that I'm making. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that I, I... Although, I cannot believe that you wouldn't know what happened at the end of la la land at this point, oh but how could i not yeah you're right it's crazy that i don't know what happened at the end of a movie it's, i haven't seen look, Mike. i mean That's i have I, I didn't t- tell you what happened at the end of the movie i'm just gonna I, walk down the street and i'm just gonna tell everybody the ending of citizen kane it's and not like, like don't worry that. about it it's not like that at all and i mean <laughs> i'm sure that when you're watching the movie you'll be like this is weird because mike said that it was go-. and that i mean it's not even a sp- it's not even a spoiler. It's not even a spoiler. I don't understand. Uh, anyway, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I would not even qualify that as a spoiler. But it's also entered the collective conscience at this point. And regardless, I just thought it was a funny thing that that uh, that mm. my friend tweeted. So you know, whatever. Anyway. Oh, it was funny. It was. It was, it was funny. Yes, yeah. it was very funny. Uh, it would have been funnier if you saw the movie. But uh, probably go, go so. See the, go see the movie because uh, yeah, <laughs> working on it. Working on it. <laughs> regardless, regardless of any of that, they showed a ton of commercials for time after time during the Oscars. And um, 
it looks like a weird show. It looks like a very weird um, tone because, yeah. I mean, the movie was really funny and everything. And this is like funny too, but it's also got that creepy element to it. You know, I mean, Kevin Williamson is the creator and everything. And I, it has kind of a screamish vibe to it, which I like. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. I, you know, I, which fits for the nostalgia wave going on right now. So, but at the same time, like I'm watching it and I'm thinking, like, okay, you've got H.G. Wells and you've got Jack the Ripper, and they're both there on a weekly basis, right? Yeah. Theoretically, they're going to be facing off rather frequently, right? I mean, I can't see how they can sustain this premise for an extended period of time. Because yeah. it's not like Hannibal, where it's like, oh, I'm hey, I'm I'm working with this guy, Doctor Hannibal, and he's cool, Doctor Hannibal Lecter. Sorry, and he's cool, you know, whatever. Yeah. He's a little weird, you know. I mean, this is like he's like, I need to go track down Jack the Ripper, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it it does seem it does seem like it would be a little a little difficult to maintain the suspense, as it were. But at the same time, I you know. I mean, what do I know, right? I mean, it's like I wouldn't suspect, I wouldn't have thought, you know, with the crime procedurals that are out there, that or like, um, oh, what what's that one? Um, uh, I want to say Suspicious Minds because I'm a big Elvis fan. Criminal Minds, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Totally different thing. But I wouldn't have thought that could have lasted this long. Yeah, but I, boy, I, has it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know, hey, these are smart people, and I guess they worked it all out, and yeah. But I mean, that that was a joke about. Nicholas Meyer directing time after time. I don't think that yes. he's going to have anything to do with time after time at all. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> he's probably he's <laughs> probably got that muted on his Twitter handle. Or his dog has it muted on her Twitter handle. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> totally. Okay, totally. so Nicholas Meyer would be my, my, I guess, number two after Jonathan Frakes. Uh, so who's yours? J.J. J. Abrams. See, Okay, well, you 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 go first. He's yes. one of the ones where I'm like, he straddles that line, okay? Because mm-hmm. yes, he's got a two billion dollar movie under his belt. Uh, you know, most recently he revived the Star Trek franchise. He is a big name director, but his his original home is television for directing, and he's a really good TV director. And it's Star Trek, so in in a sense, why wouldn't I mean, I, he's probably busy with something else or he doesn't want to do it or, but I mean, why not? Right? Like bring Abrams in. He can, he can cut a good show. He can, uh, he, he knows how to direct people. He knows how to get good performances and he's, you know, I mean th- that, I think that would be a great tie. To, it's, it's just the same type of tie together that Frakes is. Frakes is from another part of the franchise and you bring him over. Why not bring Abrams over? I, I considered Abrams and if I thought that he were, you know, at, at all realistic, I would have definitely put him on the list. But I don't think that he's realistic, even though that he's done TV, because if you look at like the TV that he's done, with the exception of The Office, um, it's all been mm-hmm. TV that he's originated, you know? And it's, he's mm-hmm. usually like directing the pilot and then leaving, unless he's like the showrunner or something, then he directs episodes throughout. But because of that, I can't really see him coming in to do just like a one-off, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, yes, I, I agree that it's, that's why I consider him on the fence. But at the same time, maybe my thinking is informed by the fact that, uh, you know, granted, I, I just saw this for the first time. But if you were to ask me years ago, would Quentin Tarantino guest star on a two-part Alias episode before it ever happened? If you had asked me that, I'd be like, no, of course not. That's crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, Abram, I mean, he seems like he'd have a pretty good sense of humor about it. I think your point about it's not a bad robot production, he's not the progenitor of it, yeah, but there, I, I guess there's a part of me that sees it as somebody could appeal to him to say, how much fun would it be if you directed an episode of yeah. this? I think yeah. it'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that he would be very supportive of it and everything, I just think like I don't know like he does like it's gotten to the point where there have been like times where he's like I wish I could like he was like I wish I could have directed the pilot for Fringe but I just didn't have time because I was doing something yeah. else 
I don't know. And he's got so many other, you know, he's got the Stephen King show starting up, Castle yeah. Rock and everything, which looks really cool and everything like yeah. that. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the concept of it because I like the concept of, you know, expanded universes and times <laughs> and stuff. Of course, of course. But, you know, whatever. Um so yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess he's a little too far outside of the realm of possibility for me, but he's I mean, I think maybe because he's we've already seen two Star Treks from him, he's not so high that he reaches my list of like unobtainable, you know, dream right. directors. He falls in the middle. But if, you know, someone were to say like we could get JJ J. Abrams should we get J.J. J. Abrams? I'd be like, hell yeah, you get J.J. J. Abrams. Yes, yeah. do that. Do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So who's next on your list? Next on my list is someone who I actually would not be surprised if they do end up getting him, and that is Michael Reimer. Um, Michael Reimer, uh, probably oh, probably yeah, best okay. known as the, uh, the lead director on Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. but also... Was he the lead director on on uh, Hannibal? He 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 was he directed a, a number of episodes of the show. Yeah, but was he was no, he no, lead I don't director? Th- I don't. No, know. I, I I don't, I don't think, think he was actually. I think it was the, that guy David Slate. It doesn't matter. Um, but he directed some Hannibal, and he's directed a lot of stuff. He's directed tons and tons of television. That seems to be his true calling. You know, he started off directing movies. Um, he did a few little ones, you know, which were okay and. Then he did uh, uh, Queen of the Damned, which was which terrible. Which is, uh, it's better than the book, I but that's not high praise. Yeah, I haven't read the book. Sorry. Queen of the Damned was, a, that that was, you know, I'll, I'll give Queen of the Damned credit because, again, the movie was better than the book, but the book was one of those books that helped sway me from the opinion. I used to, with movies and books, no matter how much I was not enjoying it, I would see it through to the end. Mm-hmm. And Queen of the Damned was one of those books where at the end of it I said, I have to rethink this philosophy. I'm not entirely sure I want to stick with this. Yeah, I've bailed on many books, but I used to have that philosophy with movies until I uh, saw Clan of the Cave Bear. <laughs> that was the movie. That's the which, one that broke you? Yeah, yeah. All right, fair enough. So yeah, uh, Michael Reimer. I mean, you look at what he did with Battlestar Galactica. You look at the way he, you know, reimagined that universe and you know, uh, really, really kicked it up another three or four quads per channel and everything. And <laughs> yep. it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing um, seeing what he did in that franchise. And I would love to see what he could do in Star Trek. I mean, back sure. when they were, you know. No one, no one knew at all who was going to be, you know, directing these things. You know, when they were talking about, you know, who or when we were talking about who would, you know, we'd like to see as like producing directors. I mean, the person right at the top of of my list was Michael Reimer, and mm-hmm. you know, hopefully we'll get to see him do uh, an episode or two of Discovery. You know, I mean, it would be super cool if he did. So he's definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I'm on board with that. I think that I think that would work. Um, for my next choice, I actually have somebody who's also done a lot of genre uh, television, actually, uh, and should be a familiar name, I think, to sci-fi people uh, in a sense. Michelle McLaren, uh, who oh, had yeah, a stint yeah. on X Files, mm-hmm. and she actually directed some phenomenal episodes of Breaking Bad. I believe uh, she which, she was the producing director on Breaking Bad, wasn't she? She and she did she did some um really really great episodes. Madrigal mm-hmm. Salute, uh, the one I can't pronounce to Hajeli. <laughs> I I don't know how to say it, but like no seriously. And she also uh, directed one of the early episodes of Better Call Saul, where uh, he first meets Tuco and Tuco uh, kidnaps him. Um, have Have you seen I, Better I Call Saul? Not, I have not okay, seen well. Better Better Call Saul yet. So now we're even with our uh, our there spoilers. You go. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's the second episode for Pete's sake. Okay, I fair think it's enough. The second. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, she's done Walking Dead. She's done. Uh, uh, she did uh, the Well Tempered Clavier, however you pronounce that, on uh, Westworld. Okay, uh, so yeah, I, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, I just, but I, mean, I she, just watched the Natalie episode of of Westworld. It that's good. a good one. Yeah. That's a really good one. And uh, and and she, she didn't she also do like Game of Thrones? 
Yeah, she's done uh, four Game of Thrones episodes. Yeah. I've never watched beyond the first season, so if any of them are beyond the first season, oh well. I've never uh, watched beyond the first episode, so yeah, I, you're ahead of me. Yeah, not really. I just <laughs> spent more time on it. Uh, sorry, Game of Thrones fans. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. I mean, she's done she's done a ton of stuff where like she's only done like one episode of this or that. Like she she did a, a an episode of Law and Order SVU. Mm-hmm. She did. Uh, uh, Hell on Wheels. She did one episode of Hell on Wheels. She's done an episode of NCIS. So she is familiar with coming into somebody else's franchise and directing an episode and then saying, hey, okay, that was great. And then like going off. So I think that, um, I think she'd be a great choice. I mean, she's got, she's got the chops for it. So I, I'd love to see her come in. Yeah. You know, I, I know that this is, you know, crossing the streams or whatever, but, you know, there has been a lot of talk about her you know, being one of the the people who they're eyeing to direct uh, a, a Star Wars movie in the not too distant future, and I could definitely that would be a okay by me. Yeah, that would be a okay by me because her work on Breaking Bad, she knows how to handle characters. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Totally. Wasn't she? She was also talked about for the Wonder Woman movie, wasn't she? Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, she shi- she signed on and then she backed out. Yeah, she like dro- she dropped out or something. Yeah, because it was a thing where like Patty Jenkins was hired to direct Thor two, and then they fired her. Yeah, and Warner Brothers hired Michelle McLaren to direct Wonder Woman, and then she left. So then they hired Patty Jenkins. They stole her from Marvel after Marvel dropped her. But yeah. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a rebound relationship, Mike. Yeah. Especially yeah. with directors. So, <laughs> who's next on your list? Next on my list is going to be um someone who I guess I guess this he maybe f- falls into that JJ category, okay? But I could see him potentially doing this because he hasn't done Star Trek before and he's a really big fan and that person is Brian Singer. Um, oh wow, that would be a great choice. Yeah. yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of also thought since Brian Fuller and Brian Singer, I think together pitched an idea for Star Trek back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I kind of thought he might be like the person directing the pilot for this, but you know that didn't happen. And um, you know, he's pitched his own Star Trek pilot along with Christopher McQuarrie and Robert Meyer yeah. Burnett. Um, well, I guess he didn't pitch it. He developed it, and then they didn't pitch it because J.J. was brought on right before they were pl- planning to do that. But mm-hmm. regardless of that, he even has a cameo in Nemesis, you know? He's a huge Star Trek fan, and he's a, a top-tier director. He's he's done a number of, you know, television shows, including it, a pilot for Brian Fuller, shot by yeah. Guillermo Navarro. But hasn't he all... Isn't he involved with Legion on FX? He, well, is he a, th- is he a producer with th- that? Or I think he's an executive producer, but I think it's one of those things where it's kind of like uh, if there's an X Men show on ah. TV, Brian Singer is an executive producer, and I think his role on the show is really something along the lines of. Um, what what J.J. Abrams does on most of his shows, you know? From what I understand, and I could be wrong about this, but I seem to remember reading an article where basically, like, they wanted to do an X-Files show, and they went to, what's his name, Noah Hawley or whatever, the guy who who, who created Legion, and they're basically mm-hmm. like, we want to do an X-Men show. You got any ideas? And he's like, sure, I got this idea. And then Brian Singer said, that's a good idea. But the show that he is really involved with is the the new X-Men show, which is being developed for Fox, ah. which is going to be like tied into the movies and everything. And he's actually directing the pilot for that and everything like that. So he could come on over to, uh, to you know, this television show, too. Sure. I, 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 I like Singer as a director. I really do. Yeah, and so I, I think he, I mean, he'd make a quality episode, one that I'd be happy to watch for sure. And he's directed, you know, a, a few TV things in the past. He did the first two episodes of House, you know, and and all that. Oh, stuff. that's right. And he was a producer on that too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would, I would be super excited to see Brian Singer directing, directing Discovery. I'm down with that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. 
All right. So who yeah. you have for your next? Now, match? see this one you might rec- you know call pie in the sky, but I think that he is just at home, just as at home on television um, as anybody else who has done both TV and uh, and big budget films. Uh, Justin Lin. I think it would be great to bring him in. Yeah. You know, and I'm not just saying that because of the whole directing a Star Trek. You know, I, I mean, he did Community. He's done. Uh, Scorpion. There was a Scorpion. Yes. And so why? You know, again, he he's in the why not category for me. And just again, just like Frakes and Abrams, he's part of the franchise. He's part of the family. Bring him in. Why not? And on top of that, if CBS wanted to make a splash and say. Look at these shows that we've got going on on our CBS All Access app. We've got a dir- Justin Lin directed one of these, and you know him from the Fast and Furious fan. You know, like I mean, I I think it adds a lot of cachet to it, and even brings in maybe just maybe some, a couple of people from his fan base that wouldn't normally turn to Star Trek. Yeah, and he has the relationship with CBS because of Scorpion and everything, mm-hmm. so it could happen. You never know. Uh, I I I would definitely be okay with that. Sure, you yeah. know, I mean, I I know that he does have like like he's doing the pilot for SWAT, right? Yeah, the new SWAT show, and there's like some other like television show that's being rebooted or something that he's doing the pilot for. I forget what it is, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I I would definitely be okay with with Justin Lin directing an episode of of Discovery. So who's up next on your list? Okay, the last person on my realistic list is going to be a controversial to- choice for some, Uh-oh. but look, here's the thing. I know that he likes Star Trek. Is he the biggest Star Trek fan in the world? Maybe not. But the fact of the matter is, he has found a niche directing shows like Star Trek in the sense of what a TV show is, and in this particular kind of sense of like what we're talking about here. And the fact of the matter is, he's one of my absolute all-time favorite directors, and if I knew that this guy was a possibility for getting him on a show that I were producing, there is no way in hell oh, that no. I would not ask oh, no. Kevin Smith to direct an episode of my show. It doesn't oh. matter if it's a Star Trek show <laughs> or a sitcom or, you know, a game show or, you know, yeah. a reality TV show. I would mm-hmm. ask Kevin Smith to direct an episode and hopefully he would say yes. See, the thing is, I'm going to say that you gave me a, a slight head fake there because, I, I, you know, and it's always a 50 50. I thought you were going to say Soderbergh, <laughs> but Kevin Smith is still in our circle of trust here. Yeah. So, OK. I, I mean, yeah, you know, okay, look, my whole, f- my whole like, uh, beating up on Kevin Smith is a little bit Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon sort of thing, except that Kevin Smith doesn't know I exist. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's a key difference. I, I don't, I don't hate him or his works, you know, as a rule, he has done good things. What would make him right for Star Trek as a franchise though? What, like, the works I'm familiar with from Kevin Smith don't say Star Trek to me. What what about his style works for this? I guess my thinking is that he has proven himself time and again as a filmmaker, as a director. And I know that everyone is going to be rolling their eyes at that because there's Pretty hard, this- Mike some weird thing about Kevin Smith not being a good director because yes, it, of oof. something which I don't even think is a real thing, okay? I, believe, I don't even I believe the think... thing you're looking for is, and I'm using air quotes here, a whole ton of bad movies. No, it's not a whole ton of bad movies because it's usually people saying like, oh man, I loved that movie that Kevin Smith made, but boy, he's a terrible director. Look at him. He has no visual style to speak of, which is ridiculous. Because even though I think that he was developing a style over the years, Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the stuff that he's doing now, I mean, say what you want about Tusk, but that movie looks amazing, you know? I haven't seen it. Shot by uh, the Academy Award-nominated cinematographer of 
Moonlight, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then you look at like the stuff that he's doing in the DC, you know, TV universe. Yeah, he's do- he's doing Flash. I mean, th- that's the thing that would make me feel a little bit more comfortable with him coming into the franchise is he has. He's done genre, you know, genre television, sci-fi television, Flash and Supergirl. And the thing about it is, like, he keeps on getting invited back to this stuff because everyone involved with the show loves working with him and says that he's really good. You know, because you know, as they describe it, he doesn't seem like a director for hire. He seems like someone who actually cares about this show because. He's a fan of these shows and he's like emotionally invested in them and he wants to make Mm. them good. And not to mention the fact that, I mean, he is a good director and he's been doing this Mm. for a long time. And, you know, he's expanded this TV thing to like lots of, yeah, I mean, he's doing an upcoming episode of The Goldbergs where they go see Batman 89, you know, opening (laughs) weekend, which I I can't wait to watch. You know, (laughs) that sounds like right in his wheelhouse. Exactly. Right. I mean, like all of these things, you know, and, you know, now he's developing a salmon Twitch TV show, which is really, you know, weird. I mean, TV is like this new job that he's found TV direction, you know, and perhaps he can blossom in that genre. Or yeah, not genre in that medium. I mean to say, right? Exactly, and you know, I think Star Trek totally fits in with that. Well, I mean that you know to um, you know my reasoning with Justin Lin or J.J. J. Abrams is you know they're able to say, hey, look at the name we got. I mean, Kevin Smith definitely falls in that category. You yeah. know, I mean that's that's a that's a selling. And again, just like Justin Lin, you might get people who aren't typically Trek fans say, oh, you know, I'll come over and I'll watch this because Kevin Smith did it. Sure, yeah. I, I, yeah, you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't lock him off the set. He's not necessarily on my list of people, but you know, I I understand your reasoning. Okay, your all reasoning. right. So, who's your final realistic choice? My final, and I think it is a realistic choice, is uh, Anthony Hemingway, who mm. is mm. a veteran of many many different uh, television series. Also, uh, directed uh, Red Tails, a Lucasfilm yeah. movie. So obviously, he is gotta be comfortable with special effects yep uh i haven't seen red tails um oh. but i no, i have it on the netflix queue now because as i was doing this research and looking up directors and everything i noticed red tails on his resume i was like you know what i've meant to watch this for ages and so you know i'll go ahead and, and check it out but uh he's i mean he's done fringe he's done yeah. true blood he's done he even did a show that i watched the whole one season it was on for uh low winter sun which was that about uh, the dirty cops in Detroit. But he also did two episodes of The Wire, which yeah. is one of the greatest television shows in the history of television. Yeah. And the one of the episodes he did was Unto Others, which if anybody's familiar with The Wire, this is not a spoiler, but it's the episode that opens with Omar in prison and his bodyguards strapping phone books to him because they know an assassination attempt is coming. So that when the guy tries to stab him, it just hits the phone books and doesn't hurt him. And Omar is able to do unpleasant things to this person to make it clear that any attempt on his life will be greeted unwelcomely. Um, it's a very memorable sequence, as you can tell. Uh, but uh, you've seen The Wire, right? You know? Do you know the episode I'm talking about? I, I vaguely remember that. I mean, The Wire is a series which I pretty much watched like in the span of like three (laughs) months or something. So it's not like I, like I can separate the seasons, but I can't separate the individual episodes. You know what I mean? Well, unto others is uh, one hell of an episode and that alone would make me want him to direct. But the the fact that he's worked on fringe, I mean, he obviously, and CSI New York, I don't care what you say. Those crime procedurals count as science fiction. Um, yes. so, you know, he's, you know, he, and he has done, he's even done an episode of, uh, Orange is the New Black. Oh, he, um, did, he did, didn't he also do an episode of Battlestar Galactica? He did. He did, uh, it was, oh, it was the one where, um, uh, Kara and, um, the president are, they're like facing off with like a gun on the table or something like that. Okay. It, it's a, it's a high tension episode. Um, but he, he's done episodes of, uh, People versus OJ Simpson. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he did an episode of Goliath, which is an absolutely wonderful show. So I, I really do. I think, I think Anthony Hemingway would make a lot of sense. 
Oh yeah, I, I would definitely be okay with that. Yeah, I, I think that he's a really good director. And Red Tails is a very good movie, by the way. So yeah. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so those those are those are the people who we who we would you know put out offers to if we were producing yes. Discovery, but uh, unrealistically speaking, who would you? pick for this for this show who would you love to see direct discovery okay i I have a few names on this list patty jenkins because she has done tv work uh for uh the show the killing um which was a well-directed series although i wasn't nuts about it i was kind of like eh on the series but like it, it was really because the show was a little bit deja vu for me where i was like oh a teenage girl was murdered and it's suspicious and there was a lot more to her life than the town thought and she wasn't as wholesome I was like there's something familiar about that Twin Peaks and I just couldn't put my finger on it so that that was my problem with the the series as a whole but Patty Jenkins is a good director and you know she's with Wonder Woman you know she's obviously you know a, a decent director they wouldn't give her a, a big budget film if she wasn't capable of it so you know, yeah. I'd like to see her come on board. Oh yeah, she did Monster, and she did. She, yeah. I, I know that she directed episodes of uh, um, Entourage, and oh, <laughs> and there and uh, she also directed a uh, Sears commercial, which was a tie-in uh, with Happy Feet. There the you movie, th- which was a George Miller movie. Yeah. So, and the reason go. why I know that is because uh, she shot it at my place of employment. There you go, and and I got to I got to see her her work, and um, it was it was pretty awesome. You've it was, never it was... seen anybody yell at a CGI penguin quite so loudly. <laughs> she seemed <laughs> I I didn't I didn't get to talk to her personally, but she seemed like a very nice person, and it, like you know the it was it was like kids were were acting in in this particular thing. Yeah. And she seemed to be, you know, very, very good with with the kids. Yeah, I I forgot that she directed Monster. That's a fantastic movie. It yeah. really is. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. If you haven't checked it out, that is totally worth seeing. Uh, so, what what's the name on your dream list? Um, the uh, I guess okay, going in in order of uh, least dreamy to most dreamy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Boy, see who do I put first? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll just I'll just put this one first, even though I, I well, hmm. hmm. Come on, come on. Uh, okay, okay. Give okay. me the don't wait for the translation. Answer me now. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino, and oh, okay, yes. Which, which is do not it. it's not super super crazy because like you're saying like oh who would think that he would star in an episode of Alias? Who would think that he would direct an episode of CSI? Who who would think that he would direct an episode of ER or almost yeah. direct an episode of, you know, the X-Files if the guilds would have let him, you know? Right. So, I mean, hey, that's not outside, totally outside of the realm of possibility. But in addition to that, he is a big Star Trek fan, you know? He mm-hmm. he, he really does have, like, a knowledge of the entire mythology. He cites Wrath of Khan as, as one of, you know, his biggest influences and everything like that. And, um... I I mean obviously he would do a kick ass job. I mean, he opens yeah. up his masterpiece, Kill Bill, with an old Klingon proverb, you know? I mean that's <laughs> Yeah, that's that's amazing. Go. And to see him direct an episode of Star Trek would be amazing. Uh, on board. Totally yeah. on board with that. I you know I'd watch a Tarantino directed anything. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally, all, uh, so long as he doesn't try to remake uh, Death Proof, which was not good. Death Proof is awesome. Uh, no, it's not. Kurt yes, Russell is. is awesome in Death Proof, but Death Proof is not awesome. It, it is, it is. Anyway. No, not really. Okay. Uh, okay, so next on my list, and this, this is um, kind of jokey, I guess, but at the same time, I actually think he's a very good director, and it would be great to bring him in, and it would never happen in a million years. That's what makes it a dream. Like, they're... they're a million years and a million plus a million days, it would never happen. Uh, William Shatner. I would love to see him come on board and direct an episode of Discovery just because it's William Shatner and just because I think he is a good director. He's he's a good director. Yeah, he is a good director. Um, It would be very interesting to see what he would do with it. 
I have yes. a feeling it wouldn't be a standout uh, in terms of the series. Probably not, but it, you never know. It could. It, it could. It could. You never know. I, I would I would definitely be like if they said William Shatner was directing an episode, I'd be like, ooh. But yeah. I think the end result may not be that tremendously great. Yeah. Why but well, okay. Yeah. I yes, that goes against the whole idea that CBS is maybe playing things a bit safe or safer than uh everybody thought, you know, with, with you know, and that's why Fuller left and everything. But um, you know, I'd love to see them do something a little dangerous with it. Now I like I that. would love it if they had him on set to shoot a documentary about the making of discovery that would be or, so i mean cool. especially now with all the drama which has apparently happened with brian fuller leaving and everything yeah. like that you know that he'd be able to get in there and get the dirt you know and he's everything. the first one that got that got uh, wacky doodle yeah you know Come and on. he doesn't care he's not in he doesn't care about protecting you know cbs or brian That's fuller true. or any of those people he would just go in there Raw nerve style and and, yep. and and get all the info for us. So yeah. that 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 would be an awesome side benefit. Who's next on your list? <laughs> okay, next on my list is uh, um, Steven Soderbergh. Of okay? course, there because, you go. You know, now look, I know that that would never happen, but you know, I would love to see it because I mean, everything that he does is gold. And um, the one time where he did a science fiction show, it was very unique. And uh, and cool looking. And I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest, you know, I mean, he does TV, but whenever he does TV, it's like auteur TV, you know? Yes. Like he'll direct an entire season of a TV show. And if they were to say like uh, Steven Soderbergh, you want to direct an entire season of, of, of Star Trek? And he said, yes, I'd be like, oh, my God. This is the most amazing thing ever. So yeah, that's o- only only if he has them somehow travel to the 1960s to when the original Ocean's Eleven happened. Yeah, and wouldn't that be the tie-in to end all tie-ins? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He'd shoot in black and white and everything. It'd be awesome. I'm sure he would. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So directors who are auteurs who do things a little bit offbeat, who are a little bit crazy. The final name on my list. It's not the final, final name, but I mean, you know, we could go on forever and ever. But the final actual name on my dream, never going to happen in a million years list, David Lynch. I would love to see David Lynch get into Star Trek and make the weirdest, most uncomfortable episode you've ever watched in your life. However, he is very capable of making something very straightforward and even family friendly. I can't recall the name of. I always forget the name of the movie. But there was the one about the guy who rode the tractor. Yeah. To go um, see his his brother. The big something or whatever. And it is a wonder. I I know that it doesn't speak well. That I can't remember the title right now. But it's been so many years since I saw it. But it was a really good movie. It really, really was. And it was really moving. And it was really straightforward. And it was Lynch. There was nothing underneath it. There was you didn't find out that like the tractor was you know powered by Satan or something like that. It was just he told a story with a lot of meaning, but without going all German expressionist with it. So no, seriously. And so like I'd love to see him come in and have somebody put sort of a constraint on him. Like the the whole reason that Twin Peaks the first season worked so incredibly well is because there was Mark Frost there who gave shape to his vision. You know, who like when Lynch would start going off a little bit wild, like Frost would be the one standing, you know, he he wouldn't have a fence for him, but, you know, he'd be like a shepherd with, you know, he'd like have his little crook and he'd be like, no, 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 go that way, David, go that way. And, you know, would come back in and, I, I mean, you know, Lynch is obviously back doing television stuff. Bring him on. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about the constraint thing. Like if David Lynch were to direct an episode of Star Trek Discovery in particular, I think what you would have to do is go to Joe Minoski and be like, okay, Joe, here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the craziest yeah, okay. thing you can come up with, and we're going to give it to David Lynch, and let's see what happens. This is the dream episode. <laughs> Everybody wakes up at the end, go crazy. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. Alien dream thing or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? I, 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 it's killing me that I can't remember the name of, uh, of that movie. 
The Straight Story. There you that's, go. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah it came out in 99, The Straight Story. Yeah. Uh, because, it, yeah, it was, and the guy wrote his, uh, yeah, Richard Farnsworth starred in it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, and if anybody has not seen The Straight Story, it is on uh, on Amazon, and you can rent it for uh, for four dollars. Well worth your time, and you you'll watch it and you'll enjoy it. And at the end of it, you will say, "David Lynch did that." It, it will puzzle you. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, for me, my my last my last big pick is going to be no shock to anyone. Um, I think you could probably guess it if you you know tried hard enough yourself. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to let you say it though, because I've already got I, I I'm, I'm gonna, like if I had an envelope, it would be like Karnak the Magnificent. <laughs> People uh, like well, it is uh, to direct things. Paul Thomas Anderson, of course. There you go. There you go. <laughs> because hey. If you can get Paul Thomas Anderson to direct anything, you get Paul Thomas Anderson to direct that thing because he's the best director in the world. So there you go. See, the thing is, though, I think that's dirty pool because like you're you're picking Paul Thomas Anderson. If you're like, I I guess even my dream list. I mean, Christopher Nolan, duh, like well, right there. That's he's, what he's it a, should be. Yes. Dream. List. OK, then fine. Nolan. I want Christopher Nolan. OK, cool. for everything. I'm, I'm cool with that. Let's get Christopher Nolan then. Let's get Christopher Nolan to do episode three and Nicholas Meyer to do episode four. And, uh, and wow, that would be the most expensive television show in the history of anything. Yes, it would it? be. It would be. But it would be totally worth it, right? Yeah, it would. Yeah. It would totally be worth it. All right. Well, okay. So here's the question for our listeners. Who, who would you pick? Who do you want to see direct Discovery, both realistically and unrealistically? Yeah. Let us know. You know, hit us up in the Babel Conference, which is on Facebook, you know, which is our, our user forum. Or, you know, uh, hit, us, hit us up on Twitter at uh, Trek FM. And, uh, hey, we'll read your, your responses on the air. On air. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been fun uh, dream casting the, the, the Star Trek Discovery directing pool this week but that's not all we're doing here on trek fm so here's a look at what you may have missed elsewhere on the network previously on trek.fm standard orbit my casting choices okay would be for ruck you got to go with dave batista right uh he's uh, drax in guardians of the galaxy he played jinx in uh yeah inspector yeah, it's not Jinx. What's his name? Hanks, Mr. Hanks. Hanks. Mr. Hanks. Yeah, Mr. Hanks. That's the wrong James Bond film, everybody. <laughs> the 602 Club. Going back to the Gotham thing really quickly, I know this is semi-derailing. Um, why would you want to move to Gotham? I mean, he has to have been there. It's like the picture that he has on his wall is this beautiful, shiny, like, daytime view, if I'm not mistaken, of Gotham, which I don't think we ever see. Um, it was like, I'm not really sure Charm City looks quite nice. <laughs> like, so. Saturday Morning Trek. It's very much like a continuation of the original series. You know what? You raise a very good point, and it's one we probably should have talked about earlier, is that we talk so much about the animation and the limitations of the medium that we forget about the writing. And overall, it's pretty strong throughout the run. And that's what else is happening on Trek.fm. Check out these shows and discover what we're talking about in your favorite corner of the Star Trek universe. You'll find us wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Windows Phone, Google Play, whatever. You you, you, you look for us, we'll be there. You could probably find us wherever you uh, found this particular episode of the show, as a matter of fact. If you're an Apple user, be sure to hit the subscribe button. That helps us out greatly and makes it easier for other listeners to find the show as they search iTunes. We'd like to thank our associate producers, Jeff Sutter and Chris Steftenagel, today. Thank you very much, guys. Um, If you want to be like Jeff and Chris, uh, you can uh, head on over to patreon.com and become a patron of the network. If you just go to patreon.com slash trekfm, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash trekfm, you'll find our current goals and different milestone contribution levels along with all the great perks we have for you, including early access to content, exclusive content, producer credits, and more. So head on over to patreon.com slash trekfm and uh, join the team. John, where can people find you on the internet? 
Look for Castle Junkie. He's out there on the internet. You can find him. That's me. And you can also find me co-hosting Words with Nerds with my pal Craig, where we do a little bit of uh, geeky zaniness every week. You can find me co-hosting over on the Nerd Party Network, Aggressive Negotiations with Matt Rushing, uh, which is a Star Wars show where we go into the strange aspects of star wars and you can also find me co-hosting great shot kid a podcast exploring the outside works of star wars creators with somebody that you might be familiar with mike his name's mike schindler and where can they find you well you can find me there doing that show where where we we do talk about the the creators of of star wars and tomorrow we're going to be talking about more american graffiti sorry uh, executive produced by george lucas and you can also find me on CommentaryTrackStars.com, uh, where I do audio commentaries and other various things on the show Commentary Track Stars. Uh, this week we're talking about, well, um, Bill Paxton on, on Sunday, of course. You know, how can you Rest not? in peace. Right? Yeah. And uh, if you're, if you're, if, if you're a Soderbergh fan like I am, and who is it, Mike? <laughs> there might be another thing coming up in the not too distant future. So keep an eye out somewhere on the internet for that. That's a heck of a tease, Mike. <laughs> All right. But in the meantime, uh, we will be back next week to take a look at a, a, a movie by Star Trek the Motion Picture Director Robert Wise Run Silent. Run deep.